The more I learn in my recovery, the faster I should be able to recover. But it doesn't happen. Major, you brought up a good point. When I left here and went home, I was actually uh, sitting on my couch and looking in the computer. And I said, man, do I really want to go down here today? Am I really? Do I really? <laughs> yeah, and so it happens to the best of us, you know, and the enemy will come in and discourage you. And when you're making major, major gains, you know, and, and so I've got to be honest, you know, you, it, it happens to the best of us, and you have to fight past that. Of that's my favorite story, you know, about the lady who went to wake up her son, and she went to wake him up on Sunday and mm -hmm. for church, and she says, I, I know that you don't like your musicians, but you need to go to church. And she went back a few minutes later, he still had covered his head, said, I know that you have a problem with the deacons, but you still got to go to church. Finally, the third time, said, look, you're the minister. You got to go to church. I know what it's like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I was at home, Major, and I was suddenly said, I was doubting myself. I said, man, you got it. And then you called, Judith, and then you called, and I said, well, you know what? Let me, you know, I'm, I'm. but I, I was really. It is normal. You have those feelings where you'd much rather turn over, cover your head, or stay where you are. See, that's why I stay here. Good to have you. Good to have you, yeah. That's why I stay here, Ralph. Uh -huh. When I come in at 8.30 in the morning, I do not go home until 8.30 that night. Because yeah. if I went home and got comfortable at my age, I'm not coming back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, in, the winter time, in, the in the winter time, too? No. It is normal to feel that way. And then, well, they don't appreciate it. You know, I see our classes growing. Because Amen. Because of their enthusiasm. Amen, yes. And yes. they're receiving, yes. because we started out true. Amen. Amen, yes, yes. But I see because of the faithfulness of those of us who mm -hmm. do come in from outside, mm -hmm. those in this building are beginning to get the victory. Amen. Yes, yes. I was, was going to say that a lot of times, I'm sure everybody goes through through it one way or another, but there's there's days that, you know, uh, uh, you don't feel spiritual. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't feel it. Mm -hmm. But... It doesn't say you're supposed to feel it. You know, God gave us a brain. There you go. And it talks about discipline. There you go. And, and Amen. so sometimes we have to be mechanical and we have to do the right thing. It's like in a lot of my prayers and thoughts and stuff. Stuff. I I, uh, I put it in just in that, that context. I know what's right. So that's the direction I move in, whether I feel like it or not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it's a natural thing. We move. Oh, come on. I just wanted to say, I uh, have a friend, and uh, before I started coming to services um, here, uh, I attended the church where I live out of Lake County, and, and um, the church I attended, I really enjoyed it and everything. I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed being there. And there was a, a, a woman there, her husband came several months before she started to come and then she finally decided to come because she wanted to see what it was all about. She wanted to see if there was some woman in the church that he was looking at and all different things, you know. Well, so she finally came and so she was there for a little bit and she really enjoyed it. But the thing that she said that was interesting to me and, I really, and it was straightforward, I mean really truthful, is that she understood as she read that she wasn't where at the desired place she needed to be because she received Christ shortly after she started coming. And like I said, her husband had been attending. But she said, I'm just going to fake it until I make it, even though I don't feel it. She said, I will fake it until I make it. And I know that sounds kind of crazy to say, but that's where she was at that point in time. So like he was just saying, you know, there are things we just do. We do them until we get a better understanding, until we really, until we understand for ourselves that our relationship with the Lord is developed, that it's developing, that it's a work in progress, that we're work in progress, and that between this way, as long as we do what we're supposed to, as long as we're walking to the best of our understanding and reading and walking to that understanding, it's between, it's, it's between here. This, this way is, you know, there'll be a lot of disappointment, especially as a new person in Christ. A lot of disappointment, a lot of misunderstandings. And when I say misunderstandings, I just mean that we may not understand 
why things are as they are with some believers. So because we may not be where and then another like major mom is, we may not understand what seem, what might seem to be hardness of heart when it really isn't. Well let me let me ride with you on that one because I, I wanna move right along in, in tying in that one. And you, you brought that out so well that we need to return to the Lord in that situation. He has, He's available and accessible to us even when we feel in our, feel, you know, not at our best. He's available. Let's go down a little bit further in terms of step four. And uh, 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 we go down and we talk about the uh, get in touch with the many behaviors and attitudes that we had since the childhood. And I like the fact that he continues to bring up that because a lot of us have a tendency when we make the search and the fearless more inventory of being more current as opposed to really going into way back, even into the childhood. And that's been mentioned no less than about three to four times. So when you make that inventory searching, there's a reason there was something that happened the way you started to develop the pattern of behavior that you engaged in. It's essential and required that you uh, look into your childhood as well. And then it goes on to talk about, we get, and he speaks of that. He says, the way that we were raised brings us an understanding of our present behavior. And then he says, as adult, we must choose. We have a choice. Choose uh, a different lifestyle in terms of our conduct. And, uh, and, and uh, we learn how to nurture, nurture even uh, when, we, when we're not feeling uh, 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 pleased about those situations, we learn how to, to handle them in an acceptable way in terms of weighing our strengths and our weaknesses as we look back into those situations, and he talks about our lives will be strengthened. And I talked about that in terms of lifting weights. We'll be strengthened having done it, going through the process. And then lastly, he talks about uh, our lives, um, areas in our lives that need to be changed and areas that, uh, and, and, and which areas may seem uh, we want uh, them to be, you know. And well, at any rate, <clears throat> My point of it is, is that we really need to do a serious inventory and take full advantage of looking back. Uh, uh, you know, here's the thing that I want to say before we go into the scripture aspect about God searching me. You know, a lot of us can are in such as, I want to continue to use this Superman complex, this denial, uh, this garment of Superman, garment that you put on to protect you from dealing with reality. But a lot of us deny our history, you know. And, and I, I want to say, and I'm going to put this out here, and, and I want you to understand this. Uh, people of color seriously have an issue of denying their history. You, you see what I'm saying? And just going beyond the people of color issue, it, it, you know, as well as other folks as well, have a habit of denying your history. Your history is what made, not, and I want to be, I want to, when I say this, I want to frame it in the context of our immediate family. You know, there's some people in your family that you can't be around when you get sober. Are you follow what I'm saying? You got some grandpas that don't get high and gonna keep getting. You know, so I, we got a history in terms of not so much. I don't want to get stuck on this people of color issue, but we got people in our family that have a history. You know, Uncle Paul gonna keep smoking his weed, or or or, or Aunt Lucy going she gonna be you know maybe drinking her liquor and gam. You know, so this just we've got to look when we talk about the history. We've got to look at our history seriously. We, we can't be, you know, uh, selective. We got to, we got, I tell you this, here's what, it, here's what I'm going to compare it to. You remember when, I, I think it was Peter that was, well, was fishing and, he, and, and the Lord told him he threw the, threw the net on the wrong side or, or something. If you want to bring in the real catch, the catch and really, really have a bountiful harvest in terms of this recovery and working these steps, you've got to throw that net on the right side and really look at y'all. Bring everything in. Are you following what I'm saying? And so this next, uh, this next actually uh, 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 passage tells us how we can do that in terms of bringing in everything and, and, and trusting God to do that. Who wants to read that? Someone that, that's in the, in the uh, group. Any, um, someone that's in the facility. Search me, O oh God, there we go. and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. We extend our trust in God by asking him to part to be part of our process of self-discovery. Mm -hmm. Test me, try me, see me. And that's what we've been talking about. Tests, they're coming in various ways. But here's the other thing that he says also in terms of this 
This is, we got to get back to this. We're talking about doing the inventory. I can't, God will, you've got to allow God, and I think I'll let you've got to let him do that inventory. Because again, another cliche that we use, self will run right. We're selective again in terms of what we want to look at. You know, it tells us, I'll tell you what me and my guys were talking about this morning as well. Anybody remember back in the days when they had those seesaws and somebody wanted to pay a cruel joke? They jump off as you were supposed to be going up and you, bam! You know, <laughs> you know they jump off and, and so it, here's what we, seesaw. But you know what, here's what I'm saying. We've got to have some balance. God has to bring, he's capable of bringing some balance. And when we jump, when we don't let God bring some balance to the good as well as the bad, uh, he jumps off or whatever and you hit the, you bottom out. Bam! And it's a painful, shocking. I, I, I wish I could take pictures of people that done that. People catch you, you know, y'all going up and down, everybody having fun. And he got it in his mind. I'm about to show them something. I'm about to jump off of here. And they're going to, he already know. It's premeditated. He know you're going to hit you. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? One more time they go up and they're going to come down in a way that they never thought about. It. And so what I'm saying is, that's what happens to us to a certain extent. If we don't allow God to bring some balance to the good and bad, you just get him off and you're going to bottom out. Bam! Can you imagine how your eyes would open up when you never expected it to come? How did that happen? You never experienced that, did you, little sis? I'm sorry. Yeah. Hey, anybody else ever experienced that, the shock? Yeah. When you, you, I've hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you, you never saw it coming, did you? And it's just a, it's an awkward feeling. Even when you do see it coming, it happens so quick. There's nothing you can do about it. You can try to brace yourself. Yeah. And so that's what God does in terms of bringing some balance to our lives. We want to take over. God says, okay, I'm out of here. Bam! I just use that illustration of me who loved to swim and loved to dive going up on the 15-foot diving board. <laughs> All set, my friend had snuck up behind me and pushed me off. And I learned a lesson. First of all, the first thing I did, I lost my focus. I had Come no on, idea... Man how I was going to hit that water, because I'm prepared to go head first, flip over, and then touch and shoot up. Do you know they really had to reach down and pull me up, because I could have drowned. Some do swims all the time. The minute you lose your focus, or you take your eye, or you hit, you hit something with such a way. And then second thing I discovered, have you ever have dove from a high water? That water cuts you like a knife. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you're ready to enter it, you have, but when you hit it, that is like knives going in. And that's, I lost my focus, I lost my, and I really had to be saved from myself. And I said, whoo, what a story that was. I was out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I was out of my comfort zone. So we go on a little bit further where it says we look at, in terms of, now this is why you really need godly balance. He brings us back to focus, Major. Here we go. And we look at resentment, focus, recognizing the damage that is done to us. When it's, they call resentment one of the number one uh, uh, um, offenders. And in terms of spiritual diseases. Hey man, I like that. Then he goes on to talk down a little bit further. How it affected our self-esteem. And uh, man, resentment is really deep. Well-being and personal relationships. Here it is. Let's look at it again. Resentment, the causes of resentment. Stress, anxiety, and uncontrollable feeling of, uncontrollably, feeling of anger. You know what? You know, if you ever, you know, have have it in for somebody, someone we talk about in our in our heart. When you just actually, when you see them, and you just totally your whole attitude. You know, it's it's a part of you to just resent their presence. And you could, they could, no matter what they say, you got that issue with that. My sister over there smiling like, you see what I'm saying? And so we again, we when you be honest, you need God to bring that balance because if not, you're gonna bottom them out. And then it says this, you know. They ask, well, why, why did you do that? The, the, the guy might not say nothing. I, or, or the woman. Well, no, we're sticking with the guy. You know, let y'all get it off. When, they say uh, that, uh, when you say man, we interpret it as mankind. Yeah, but here's what I want to say. Is that in terms of this issue here, is listen to this. It's uncontrollable anger.